We want to talk about uh, rebellion this morning. Rebellion is, now I know we're not of us guilty of this, but we're just mentioning it. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. When a person starts out uh, in life, they, they get directed in a path. And sometimes they they feel like uh, you you run across people in life that want to control everybody. Yeah. What's done, what's said. Uh, some of them are teachers, some of them are uh, instructors, and, and, and they live a life. And there's times when men, we as men, don't step up. So women have to move in and do what they need to do. But in Ephesians, I wanted to look at uh, I want to mention King Saul was the first king of Israel and uh, I was reading and studying about that and this this guy said that God chose King Saul well God didn't choose him the people chose him as a matter of fact God said uh, it, it, it grieves Samuel, I believe it was, that, that the people, they wanted somebody to rule over them. They wanted somebody to, to be like the rest of the kings. And I'm afraid we in America are like that a lot of times. We feel like uh, we got to be like the world. We want to, we, and God says, I want you to be like the world. He said, I want you to be like me. Uh, now, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse uh, 21, 20, 20 says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we approach God, the Father, is through His Son. Why Jesus? because Jesus has paid the price for us and we have eternal life through him. We always have access to God through him. Now, and let me mention this. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18, the Bible says that Jesus uh, has uh, power over hell and death. Now, we as God's people, we don't have to worry about death as far as fear of death. Right. Satan, at one time, in Hebrews says, he had, he had the power to, and people were scared because of death. And Jesus came and died and was resurrected, and therefore he's overcome death. And Jesus has the keys to death and hell. Now, also he has, a, now, what about hell? He has the keys to that. Satan doesn't control hell. No, God took care of all that. God, as a matter of fact, your body belongs to God. And when you get saved, you're called to follow him. And when you follow Jesus, look for trouble. That fair to say? The world's going to be against you. It's going, you're going to fight battles and you're going to think, why in the world is all this going on? Now, the next verse says, uh, giving thanks, and it says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Do you fear God? If, if we feared God, uh, what would change in our life? You know, if we really feared God. If you had to stand before the Lord today, I guarantee you, you'd be on the floor. But today we talk about Jesus being a good buddy and a this and that and a man upstairs. He ain't the man upstairs. He, listen, the Father is sitting on the throne. The Son is at the right hand. And I'm going to tell you something. When we stand before him now, it, it's going it's to be something because he's going to judge us. Now, we've already been judged in Christ as a Christian. But if you're not saved and you, you say, well, what is God going to judge? How have you served God? You say, well, I... I feel like I can do my own thing. Now, you don't do your own thing and follow Jesus. Now, let me just say this. Uh, uh, they made a statement in the scripture that says, uh, if you put your hands to the plow, y'all ever plowed? I know Jimmy has. David, you plowed? 
I mean, we had we had the uh, when I I was so young that one of us would hold a stock and the other one would hold the reins and, we, and we'd be plowing, covering up stuff and you know. But if you put your hands to the plow and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Now, why would Jesus make such a statement? Because he knew people before the end of time would walk away from God saying, I do it my way. That's rebellion. If you're not willing to submit to God, he's not your Lord, you're doing your deal. You're following your will and you, you say, I hadn't got to do all this stuff. Well, it's not, a, it's not stuff. It's a love for Jesus that we all want. And we don't want to walk in rebellion, right? right. Now, anytime you start to control your life, uh, it's just a natural thing. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not fussing about women this morning, but if a man don't step up, woman's got to do something. Women are good at correcting us when we need correcting, right? That's right. Uh, sometimes we don't listen, but we need to understand that God gave you that woman for a reason. Okay, then he goes on to listen to this. Wives, what's that next word? Love you. Huh? Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Submit. What? Yourselves, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Now this pretty stout, okay, as unto the Lord. In other words, the way you if, the way you present your life to Christ, the wives are to submit themselves unto the husband as unto the Lord. That's, that's like, man, alive. You think I'm gonna submit to that sorry joker? You wrong. Uh now wait a minute. Now, why does God do that? Now, we're going to read on and see what happens. Uh, for the husband is the head of the wife. Now, that doesn't mean he's a dictator at all. Because he's not the dictator. He's the head. He's the one that's going to have to give an account when you stand before Jesus one day. Okay. And you're going to have to say, well, Lord, you know. Okay, no, he said, my wife. That's what, that's what Adam said. You know that wife you gave me? Uh, yeah, okay. But who's, who's supposed to have been there with his wife? That's right. Was Adam. But he wasn't there. Where was he out? He's probably out fishing or uh, <laughs> looking in the garden. Or, and uh, he said, I'm tired. She, you know, she's sweet and everything, but uh, she fusses at me all the time. You know? She tries to get me to do stuff. And I need to fix this in the house. And I, he won't do it. And, and I'd rather live here, and he, had, he wants to live here. And what's going on here? That's just normal life. Am I right? We want, we want it our way, but he, here's what he said. The answer to it is to submit to your own husbands, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Now, you realize Christ is, is the head of, the, of, of any church that's his church. Christ is the head of it. I pastor, preach, but I'm not the head. Uh, and, and I use this illustration a lot. I heard a preacher say this years ago. He said, I don't, I don't dictate and I don't run the church, but I'm here to make sure you don't. <laughs> and okay. But there are always people that do not want to submit. They want to run it their way. And if it's not done their way, then they throw a fit. And you watch them, and, and that's what they'll do. Now, let me say this. We're here today to hear from God, but if we come in rebellion, and I'm going to tell you, Satan will work on you while this sermon's going on, mm -hmm. saying, I, I, I don't believe it that way. I don't like it that way. I don't like it. Well, that's rebellion. If God tells you something, and you don't say, I'm not going to do it that way, then that's rebellion. And that's what happened to Saul. God says, Saul, I'll tell you what I want you to do. The, the, the prophet came to him and he said, I want you to destroy all the animals and the, and the king and all these people, the Amalekites. So he said, he got to thinking about it. Well, what is the point in that? It's like God will say to you, you got some magazines in your house you need to get rid of. And you say, 
Well, I get rid of most of them, but I think I'll hang on to one. There's one. God said, no, I didn't say it's <laughs> one. You saved one. Oh. He said, I said, get rid of all this junk that's, that's influencing you to go away from God. So you rebel and say, I, no, I'm going to do it my way. Now, there's things if you're a Christian, God's going to deal with you about. If you're a Christian, God will deal with you. People are chasing you. If you're not chastened of God, if God never speaks to you, and you don't know that God has ever said anything to you, there's a reason. You don't know God. You might know about God. And now, I'm not saying you can't be in rebellion, but God will whip you. Am I right? He will chase you, and if you're not chastened, he said you are a, I don't say what the Bible says, he said you are a bastard. And not, a, and not a child of God. You're illegitimate, he said. So God says, this, you need to get these things right. And Saul made excuses and said, well, the people, the people made me do it. And uh, he told the prophet when he came up, he said, uh, I've, I've obeyed the Lord. And, and the prophet said, what said I hear? The bleating of the sheep and all these mooing and cows and stuff. You're supposed to kill them. And who's these people over here? You you hadn't obeyed me. Now I'm gonna tell you what happened to it. You know what happened to Saul? God said, okay, since you can't obey me, I'm fixing to uh, remove you from your kingship. And not only you, but your family that would follow you, they're not gonna follow, they're not gonna follow in your footsteps and be the king. They could have been. But God said, no, you, you choose to not obey me. But he said, I have a man after my own heart. Now, how many of you know David was a man after God's own heart, but he was a sinner? You say, God used the sinners? If he didn't, he wouldn't have nobody used. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what we all are. We have thoughts. We, have enter we entertain things that's not good. Okay, the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Now, if it's, okay, I, when I had, we had two girls, uh, I counted whenever, this is the way I feel about it, I want to teach them about Christ. I want them to go to heaven. And if they don't go to heaven, it's rough. I, I can't hardly stand that. That my children would spend eternity in a lake of fire. Forever. And I could see them. And I said, Lord, mm. so what do you do about that? You pray. You pray every day. <laughs> you pray for people that you know are not prepared. And you spend time with God. Now here's why. Why, why the man? Why does a, why does a husband, why does a man? The man is supposed to be the leader. He's the one that's supposed to be praying. He's supposed to uh, David, you glad your son serving God? Okay. Yes. Is it because you was good? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> we do the best we can. We leave it to the grace of God. Now, you listen, you young people, y'all will decide what you do with Jesus. Your parents can raise you right and lead you. But that, you, you, matter of fact, this is what breaks my heart. Most preachers' kids don't serve God. I talk to a lot of them. And I say, uh, oh, my daddy was a preacher. And I say, well, yeah. Are you serving the Lord? Well, well, you know, uh, you know, you know, they got disillusioned at church and people. Mm -hmm. And so they don't serve God. Right. Well, we're not serving people. We're serving Him. And if you love Him, you give Him your whole heart, you obey Him, and you listen to Him. Now, there'll be times that you will rebel, but God will whip you, and you will never have peace until you get it right. God won't say, oh, that's okay. I mean, I know you. I know you like to look at uh, pornography, and I know that, you know, there's preachers that do this. And you say, well, uh, I, I don't want to talk about that this morning, preacher. Well, that's one of the greatest sins in this country. There's more hits and from Christian people on pornography probably than there are lost people. Now, why? It's because we don't fear God. And, and if you're caught up in this thing, and women are doing this too, if you're caught up in things that's pulling you away, that's a beautiful lesson here. 
But be careful what your eyes see. Because that goes down in your heart. And then when it gets in your heart, out of your heart proceeds evil things and this and that. As a man, now listen to this. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You say, well, I, I soak this stuff in, but it don't affect me. No, it makes you what you are. And God will chasten you until you get things right. Until everything comes in. You know, here's why. Jesus is coming after a bride. And he wants that bride to be holy because they love him. It's not a doing. It's because you love him and you're willing to submit to him. Now, are you willing to submit to Jesus? Just say, Lord, whatever you want. Let, let's just let him control. Okay? Uh, is that right? Let him control you. Not, not your wife. You say, now you can pray for your wife. You can pray for your son. You can pray for your daughters. You can pray. But until you step up and be who you're supposed to be, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to die and go to hell because the daddy didn't step up and do what God called him to do. Ain't that right, Jim? That's, right. that's where he got a hold of you about, wasn't it? That's right. That's right. The time, the time you got up, you got up and went to church and served God. That's the way God put it. He, why, why Jimmy? Because he's the lead. He's, he's the one that God called. Now, a, a wife doesn't mind submitting if a husband is trying and he's doing his best to try to be what he's supposed to be. And I'm going to tell you something. The, what, what's missing in the whole families today is, are men that will step up. And I thank God for our men. I'm going to tell you that. I, I just appreciate our men. No, are they perfect? No. But you ladies, y'all ain't either now. Let's just, you know. Uh, y'all got y'all ways and we got our ways. And never the twain shall meet a lot of times. But we can forgive and go on in life and obey God. And one of these days, now here's why. It's because the children are watching you. And the way you act towards your husband and the husband towards you teaches them how they ought to act. And uh, you can be nonchalant. Uh, Okay, Christy, now, you know, one of the things we said at y'all's ceremony was one day you'll give an account of how you treat her. Right? That, that's stupid. Okay? What if he mistreats her? What would God do? Now, I'll teach you a lesson here today. God will tear his britches up. That's what Sandra said a lot of times. I'll turn you over to the Lord, let you get over you need to get straightened out here. And uh, I do need to get straightened out. We're not perfect people, right? And we need Jesus and we need correction. And if we live in rebellion, then you're going to hurt. You, it's, God's going to make sure that you will not have peace in your heart. You will try, you will seek things, but you'll never have peace. There's not enough dope, there's not enough alcohol, there's not enough wild living, to satisfy your soul when you're a child of God. Now, a lost person, they go on and just live their life. But if you're a child of God, God's gonna, he's going to convict you, and he's going to draw you. Why? Because those little old kids that we're looking at this morning, they've got a future. And if we don't teach them the right way, then they're going to go the wrong way. And they need to be taught by a daddy that loves them. That's right. And I, I mean, I think about Jimmy's uh, too. And uh, now, Jimmy Dale, uh, he he does all right, but Jennifer, <laughs> she is a car now. This she, I don't know who she take after Jimmy. What do you think? I guess she got it from me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She did. Okay. All right. But. They're sweet kids, they love the Lord, and they're walking with God. And what I'm saying is, you you are done, you've done this. You've done your part. You're not perfect. Terry, you, you hadn't done everything right, but your kids love the Lord. See, that's the important thing in life, is that you set that example and you keep praying. Now, most preachers, children, live in rebellion a lot of times. You can't stop that. Uh, the man that wrote uh, David Wilkerson, 
that's got the homes and, and the uh, assembly of God. And he's won, I would say, through his ministry, has won thousands upon thousands of prostitutes and, and dopers and everything else to the Lord. His grandson, matter of fact, was in jail because he lived in rebellion. Not his son, but his grandson. And his, and his son was preaching one day and he told about it, how God's presence came in there where he was at and he, and he called home and told him, he said, God has been with me and I'm giving my life to God and I'm walking with God. Don't never give up on your child. Don't never, listen, when you see the look on their face, whenever they go off into the pit one day, it would be a horrible thing to see that. And God says, listen, you daddies, it's your responsibility. You need to stand up. King Saul lost the whole shooting match because he would not obey God. He did it his way. Now, ladies, you can be an influence on your husband, good or bad, right? You, you can you can say, okay, uh, now let me just say, tell you, uh, uh, husbands love, or oh, they're going to get into some stuff here. Husbands love your wives. How do you know you love your wife? Well, I, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> the Bible also says don't be bitter against your wife. Now, why would you be bitter? Because she don't do what you want her to sometimes. And you get bitter. You say, she nagged me and she busted at me and she just after me. And uh, Could that be God? Could that be God trying to help you to do what you need to do? That's what God's saying. He says, but love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Now, what about that? You say, my goodness, Jesus died for the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now, the best thing I feel, it's not always just, you don't live in the Bible all the time, right? I mean, I do because that's just, you know, I'm a nut, you know. I, I just I love I love to get the word. I just love it. Now sometimes I don't I don't enjoy it. I just go through the motions and I don't you know. But maybe you don't go in the word all the time. But you need to you need the word in your life every day. Just if it's nothing but five minutes or whatever. I'd rather you know God has said if you love me you keep my commandments. You don't know his commandments if you don't read his word. Okay. And God instructs us in his word. You don't know how to respond if you're not in the word. And a lot of times the reason we don't read the word is because it convicts us. You say, well, you're not doing this. And you think, well, Lord, you know, what about old brother so-and-so? He don't do it either. You know, we had a young man and uh, came to see us this week. And uh, it was amazing. He had been through as a Christian, he lived a life of rebellion. He said, my mama prayed for me. And uh, he said, I, I, I went with a woman that was older than I was. And he said, she had me trapped. And he said, I didn't see any way out of it. I thought I was doing the right thing, you know. He wasn't listening to God. See, you see what I'm talking about? But when she committed a, when she run around on him, it changed. Oh, he thought, hmm, that changed things, didn't it? And finally, he came to his senses as a young man, and he got right with God. Now, we want to act like, folks, there's a lot of people that are Christians and saved that's not living right. You understand that? That's right. Have you ever done that? Have you ever been to the point that you, you know, you think, well, I, you know, I'm doing all right. I've been saved, and I, but you're not dedicated. You, you, God's not in your thoughts. But you, you don't want Him in your thoughts because you're you're doing stuff that God sees you doing, and then some people are lost and don't even know God, and, and they they don't want God. They don't want the Bible. They don't want to live for God. I didn't know. I didn't know the difference. See, until God came to me and showed me just what I was. You know what I was? I was a sinner. And I needed help. 
and I didn't know how to get away. I mean, uh, you can get to the point in life where you, you live in sin so long, and and you want you you want whatever you want, and you don't care what people. Listen, I didn't care if the whole world went to hell. You leave me alone, and don't put no preacher around me. I don't want to hear. It. That didn't mean that when I was 13 or 14 years old, who was in McNeil, Arkansas, and the preacher was preaching, and the Holy Spirit dealt with me so strong, and I walked down an aisle, but I didn't know what to do. I just walked down an aisle. And I felt like, I'm all right. All right. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. I would argue with anybody in the service you, about going to heaven. Yeah, I'm going to heaven. I've been saved, you know. Didn't know what I was doing. They were like hell, you know. You can do that as a Christian, but I'm going to tell you what, God will whip your preachers off. You'll be the most miserable person in the world if you don't do what God's called you to do. You are called to do something. And he said, quit looking back. There's nothing back yonder. Folks, we're getting closer every day to going home. And you you thinking, oh, i got a lot of time left. We had a little young girl this this last week that was killed in a car wreck. Her daddy was driving her to school over at Magnolia. And they had her funeral. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to go to it, but I didn't get to it. I didn't realize they had it. And they said there were so many testimonies and so many things. But I'm going to tell you something. Death is real. Okay? You, you, may, you may go through a lot of stuff in life and it may not affect you. But you let death knock on your heart's door, or you let it come to your house, and you let it come to you, and it gets real. And then you begin to wonder, what about that person? Why don't we say something before they get killed or something happens? How many people have been in car wrecks? How many times should we have died? But we didn't. Why? Because God wasn't through with us yet. That's why. Yes, sir. And when God carries somebody home, that's God's calling. That's not my calling. I can rebel and I can say, Lord, I don't understand it, but I'm going to tell you something. God is God, and you're not God. And when God gets ready, he'll call people home. And you know why he does it? He does it to get our attention. He says, you're going to die one day, and what are you going to do when you stand before me? And what about your family? And what are you going to do if they die and go to hell? So, well, Lord, I, I, I can't save them. God ain't asking you to save them. He's asking you to live for him. Let's go to Revelation. And we'll close. Uh, if you had to face God today, how would it be? Uh, Revelation 20. church for 30 years and not know Jesus at all. That's very possible. Nicodemus was a leader of the Jews and he didn't know Jesus. He didn't understand being born again. Jesus said, you're a leader. You don't understand this, that you must be born again. He didn't understand it. I didn't understand How could you understand it if you've never experienced it? But once he comes in, you know Jesus. I tell you what, his name means something to you. Now you're in Revelation 15, verse 10. We'll look there this morning. And it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, there's people, I used to think this, that I've heard people's testimony that they went to hell and the devil and the demons were persecuting them. But it looked like to me, God said the devil's going to be in hell and he's going to be tormented. Right. That's what God said. Right. We got ideas that sometimes are not right. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. Now, what is no place for them? If you, if you today, if we died and we went up 
And where do we go when we die? Meet Jesus. We're going to see Jesus. Are we going to a pit one day? We're going to a hell, an abyss is what it's called. And we're going to wait there until he comes and takes us out and judges us if you're lost. A uh, Christian goes right in the presence of God because Jesus has got a home for you. We will be judged on what we did and what we didn't do. You say, you, li you live in rebellion? Well, Lord, I look back sometimes. He said, did you get it right? He knows. And you're going to look at Jesus and you're going to give an account of yourself to him. Now, what you do with Jesus is what's going to determine if you have accepted him, he's your Lord, you ain't got you had you got peace, all right? He's got the keys. Okay? And he's the only one. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The dead. Uh how many people you know that honestly if you question whether they're saved or not, that they've gone on. Uh I heard, a, I heard a man preaching a sermon or a funeral at the Methodist church one day, and I believe he preached for hours on how good this guy was. Hmm. You want to go up and say, well, that same guy I knew, you know, okay. Uh, you know, I mean, oh, he never served God. He didn't do what? I've heard people just like, uh, and I thought, man, live. That man was a whoremonger, and he lived like hell. And he did this, and he, I think, why are you saying that? You know why? Because we want to please people. Mm -hmm. Did you know when a preacher preaches, your, your funeral, he shouldn't have to lie about what you are and what you did. He shouldn't be able to tell the truth. A preacher never has a right to say he went to heaven. If you never served God, well, I don't have a right to say. I had a person tell me that one day. Said, I appreciate the fact you didn't say he was in heaven. Well, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. See, I, I, listen, how many of you deserve to go to heaven? Mm -hmm. Have you really been saved? Have you really been born again? So, well, I'm, I'm pretty religious. I'm in church. Yeah, the devil's here too. But I'm going to tell you something, God's here. And today you'll make a decision on what you're going to do with Jesus. You say, well, I, I feel like one of these days I'll get it right. You may not be living the, at the end of this week. You may not be. And the sea gave up the dead which are in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now, don't you listen to verse 15. Now, this is the second death. The first death is when you die. The second death is when you stand before God and then you're going to give an account. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. How many times have we been in a service before we were saved and we didn't even understand what preacher told us. But one time, God really got a hold of your heart. And you say, Oh, I feel like I need to, I need to do something, Lord. I don't I didn't understand conviction. But when God see, God can save you at your house. Mm -hmm. That's where I got saved, was at my house. Anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. You don't have to be in church to get saved, but you know what? If you're not saved, and, and you die, and preacher gonna say some kind words, and, he, and we're gonna have this deal, you know, and we'll mourn, and 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 how do you get over this stuff? And Jesus one day will wipe away the tears and say, "It's over with." And what did we do about the loved ones that perished? Without hope, and God's not going to undo it. When the ark, when the ark 
on the door of the ark was closed. It was closed. And you will get in. And you will spend eternity. Not a few days. You will never get out. And you will spend eternity in a lake of fire. I don't know about you, but I want to know what, where I'm going. I, I say, Lord, no. If I'm missing something, I want to do it. Whatever, if it's something I need to do, it's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to say yes to Jesus? You say, well, I'm all right. I think I'll be okay. You, you might think you might. But folks, let me tell you something. Being in church don't save you. Right? As, as they say, uh, uh, being in the garage don't make you a car. So you just need to get right and be sure you know him. Why don't we just pray today? And if you've got a question about your salvation, why don't you just ask Jesus? He's here. <clears throat> Would you be willing to say yes? You say, well, I, I, I've turned my life around, but it's Jesus turned your life around. Is it Jesus in you, Christ in you? The hope of glory. And if you're not saved, I'm going to tell you something, it ain't going to be pretty. <clears throat> you say, well, I enjoy my sin. Yes, uh, everybody enjoys sin for a little while, but eventually, maybe we need to come to the altar today and pray for somebody, some lost soul, somebody in your family that's not right with God, that they would get right. This could be the day that Jesus says, okay, enough's enough. I'm going to take y'all home. You're going to be with me forever. It's going to be good. And I'm going to tell you something, but if you're not ready, it's over with. You will spend eternity. You say, but how many thousands of people are going to say, Lord, I, 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 I did this, I did this, and he said, I never knew you. I, I didn't never know you. You didn't never talk to me. You never, you never did anything but live your life the way you wanted to. You cussed and lived like hell and you didn't care. And God's not going to sugarcoat it. He's going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Now, God don't want to do that. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Now, folks, let me tell you something. Walking an aisle, getting, going to an altar, ain't going to save you until your heart is in it. If you would let Jesus this day come in your heart, you can open your heart where you're at and say yes to Jesus, and he will save you. He'll come in and he'll let you know you're saved. Maybe you're backslidden and you say, Lord, I, I wandered. I, I need to get back right. By the prodigal son, you out living and you're, not, you're just not settled and you need to come home. Won't you do that today? Let's pray together. Father, we just pray that the Spirit of God will so convict today and draw souls to you. And that those that were lost without you would open their heart to you, Father. And you would bear witness with the Word of God today. And you'd bring them to you. We can't save them. All we can do is preach. And I pray that the Spirit of God would convict. You're the only one who can draw them. I pray you'll do that today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want you to think about it. If you die today, where are you going? Are you sure about your salvation? If you got a doubt, that's what we're here for. Right. I mean, we'll pray with you for you. And uh, just answer God's call when you don't when he touches your heart. Thank y'all for being here. Uh, take this week to witness to somebody and tell them about Christ. Just say what God good God's been to you. And you say, I, I've already done that. No, but God will put somebody in you in your workplace or where you're at and you will get an opportunity to talk to them about Jesus. You never know what you can do and you can encourage somebody to come to him. And that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can't in, maybe you can, you say, I can't win my family. No, but somebody else might. And you witness to their family Somebody might witness to your family. And you never know what's going to happen. But God's good.
Thank y'all for being here. Uh, what a blessing.